what is going on beautiful people we are back my name is finesse as always that's my man lock and we got a loaded stream tonight uh we talking nba uh lock got some mlb sauce for you guys and a huge historic uh ufc 300 car coming up this saturday so we're gonna discuss that as well um but yeah thank you guys for uh being here so early um you know showing support as always um, hit that like button if you haven't already. Helps us out at the beginning of the stream. Uh, YouTube kind of pumps it out to people. Uh, hopefully, we get some new eyeballs on the stream. So, um, yeah, appreciate you guys for watching. Another another Thursday, another stream. Uh, Log, my brother, how you doing? I'm great, bro. How are you? You already know what it is. How's the how's the betting been? How's how's life? How's everything going? Mm, everything's just okay. Nothing. Just okay. Just okay. But this weekend's going to be a movie, so, I mean, it's mm -hmm. the best card I've seen in my life by far, so hopefully we have a good time. I don't even, like, I, I say this now, I say I want to watch it just as a spectator, not as better, but you damn well know I'm going to have some coins around the game, yeah. <laughs> uh, around the fight, yeah. sorry, so. I went from, damn, let me let me try to limit my action to, like, watch as a fan to, yo, I kind of want to have action on every single fight, just because it's such a, a huge fucking card. From but prelims I, all the way. Yeah, it's crazy, Looks bro. Two, two former champions opening a card. It, I mean, just historic. Absolutely historic. Um, we got some of the usual suspects in the chat. Appreciate you guys. Zappy, Skiz in the chat. Uh, Danny's in the chat. Chris in the chat. Salute to all of y'all. Appreciate you guys for being in the chat. Uh, but yeah, like like I said at the top, we got a load of streams. So, you know, I guess we won't waste any more time. Um, like, if you want to start with your MLB, just like we did last time, I know you got some sauce for the people. Yes, sir. Um, so let them know. So uh, let's start it off. First of all, before we get into the picks, shout out to Sleeper for sponsoring today's stream. Oh, I wanted to say you. I wanted to say it today. <laughs> Holy so, shit. <laughs> so yeah, shout out to Sleeper sponsoring today's stream. <laughs> Wouldn't be possible without me laughing at grown ass men giggling. What's the code? What's the, what's the promo code? Promo code is Gold Boys. There you go. It's not. It's not, not Golden Boys. Not Gold Guys. Gold Boys. Is that good? That yeah, was that good. Six out of ten for sure. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah. If you're if you silly if you uh if you weren't giggling maybe it'd be a little better. But I <laughs> it was fucking a lot. Like, keep the my keep my composure. She was so random. Okay, James, put up my freaking baseball slip, man. <laughs> So I just have the same game for the Orioles uh, Boston game. Um, it's pretty simple stuff. It's Gunnar Henderson to record a run. This guy gets on base at least every single game. Like, and then I have Adley Rushman two total bases. I was gonna do two hits, but I thought maybe just let's be safe, just in case he gets like one hit and it's a double. And then I have Santa there to record an RBI. Two ready pitchers today. Um, Gunnar Henderson is a lefty, which is good. Adley Rushman is a switch hitter, which is great. And Santander is a switch hitter, which is great. So they're all going to get the preferred matchup in that side. And then I'm going to go for Tyler O'Neill to record a run, who is leading his team in runs this season. I, that was a surprise to me, but he also has six home runs. So that also helps him. We got Jaron Duran for two total bases. He has been on fire, like averaging, I think, like 336. Um, he... Uh, he's against the righty pitcher. He's a lefty. He's been crushing right-handed pitches so far this year. And then last is Tristan Cassis, another lefty batter. My only concern with him is he strikes out a ton, but at least you know when he goes up there, he's going up there to swing rather than going up there to take a walk or something. So I'm going to take his RBI, 1250, 0.25 units, pays 514. And, yeah, that's the that's my only – MLB play tonight. There's only one. Well, there's two games. I think Philly's gonna get rained out because it looks like atrocious weather over there. So I'm not really gonna mess with anything there. I like it. Like it. What a way to kick off the show. What was that? Uh, um, James. It still says starting soon for me. I don't know if you can fix that real quick. Yes. Yeah, um. But what was that? Like a forty to one, forty-five to one. What a way to start. Forty-one. Yeah, forty-one to one. What a way to start. So. Hopefully that shit smacks, like you said, uh, very doable. It looks very doable, so um, I love it. I love it. Um, all right, so, yeah, as y'all know, I don't, I don't got no baseball for y'all motherfuckers right now. Um, but I think it's going to – I think today's going to be my last day at NBA. I really wanted it to be yesterday, uh, but obviously, you know, we had the stream, so 
Uh, I'm not gonna flake on NBA, but yeah, today might damn well be my last day of of NBA betting. Uh, the weirdness at an all time high, just that time of the year, you know. Uh, some teams playing seriously, some teams. It's just like with that Boston game. I have a feeling that because I expect the guys to sit, but everybody's in, so I expect some weird shit. I think some weird shit gonna go to the, you know like halftime, you know, um, you know the the backup start the second half or some some crazy shit like that. But but we'll see. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um, I got a lot of NBA I like today. I got some straights. I actually got some lottos for y'all too. So <laughs> stay tuned for that. Uh, but yeah, five games. And uh, let's get right into it. Uh, we'll start with the Bulls and the Pistons game. We're still getting injury news uh, floating in. That's what I mean. Just the, the weirdness at an all-time high for NBA. Let me get the most updated injury news. Um, okay. So for the Bulls, Caruso is going to play. The Zoom news out. Andre Drummond is out. Um, and then just the regular crew is out. No Levine, no Lonzo, no Patrick Williams, all of those boys. For Detroit, uh, no K tonight, no Fontecchio, that's uh, Locke's boy. Uh, no Ev Evboa one, I don't know how to fucking say that. Um, obviously still no Sir, no Isaiah. So some of the normal guys, but some some big injuries too on both sides. Um, I have zero interest in this game. Uh, Locke, you like anything? I just took Vucevic under rebounds, like you said. Um, I've noticed a lot of things with the main starters of the team um, just sitting for no reason. We saw yesterday Mikhail Bridges. This guy sat like the whole third quarter, sorry, the whole half of the third quarter and the fourth yeah. quarter and didn't step foot on the court again, which is really strange, especially in a close competitive game. You don't really see that. So I actually have an unders parlay. You'll see it at the end. But my first pick is in that parlay is Vucevic under 12 and a half rebounds. 12 and a half is already a really high number for him. Um, in general, like on a regular season game. So getting under 12 and a half against, against the Pistons, which has a lot of blow potential with the fact that they might start sitting their players. I'm going to take it nine times out of 10, especially at that number. Yeah, I like it. I, I like unders. I know you're starting to do that, uh, that underlays, like you said earlier. I love that, especially this time of year. Um, yesterday I did a, uh, I did a reverse block party. I don't know if you saw that. I took three guys under a block. And um, fucking quickly sold it for me. But I was thinking about doing that again. Um, like you said, I think the minutes are going to be weird. Rotations are going to be super weird. So I like it. I like that a lot. All right, let's move on. Uh, Nick Celtics, first TNT game of the night. Um, looks like I don't even have, like, a line. But I can get it. Hold on. So it looks like Celtics are laying three points at home versus Nick's team. Uh, like I mentioned before, I expected some guys to be out, but it looks like not. Uh, on the Knicks side, completely healthy. Uh, Boston side, yeah, it looks like everybody's going to play. Just no O'Shea Brissett, but he's not a part of the rotation at all right now. Yeah, Tatum's in, JB's in, uh, Tinkus Pingus in, Drew's in. Everybody's in. Even Horford, Tillman, everybody's in. So, you know, it's another game where, like I said at the top, I think some weird shit going to be going down. It's an important game for the Knicks still for seeding, but... Uh, Boston has everything locked up because uh, you know what it is, future champs. Um, but, yeah, Boston has everything locked up, so I'm just deathly afraid of some weird-ass shit happening in this game. So I stayed off. I don't have anything in this game. No build the legs, nothing like that. So absolutely nothing. Lock you. I got nothing in this game as of right now. I was thinking of playing maybe the Josh Hart triple-double. It's kind of basic. I mean, a lot of people are on that type of play. I really think the Knicks – will win this game just because I feel like Boston is going to bench starters, something like that around the first half. Maybe even in the first quarter, I might let them play a bit and then call it. I mean, the spread's really shaky. Three points is extremely strange for Knicks Celtics. I would assume it'd be closer to like seven on a regular day for the Celtics. But yeah, I know, I know the Celtics and high spreads doesn't really go too well. They usually lose the game. So I really... <laughs> I really, I don't have any action, uh, so go fuck yourself. I'm just pissing you off. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it'll be first quarter, but I definitely think coming out of the half, I don't think anybody's gonna be notified or anything like that. I think we just see some weird shit in the second half. But uh, Chris said all all Tatum lines are locked on Fanduel for some reason. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah, they playing, heard me. But, uh, the yeah. Uh, Julian's in the chat. UFC 300 about to be a movie. Absolutely, we're gonna talk that a little bit later. I appreciate you being here, as always, my brother. Harold, 
Uh, Omar Yersevin, I think he's talking about for Utah, double-double. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that game. I like that look. Uh, you should see a lot of run. Sam says, the Rosen 30-plus. Um, Samurai says, UFC 300, I already know you're going crazy. That's the plan, you know what I'm saying? Coming off a winning week, um, a lot of action, a lot of those that I like. So, for sure, um, I, I definitely hope so, too. Sam says, Nick's spread. Boston has nothing to play for. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. yeah, that's why it's so weird. You know, I, I don't know. We shouldn't be playing our guys, you know, but I think Missoula wants to kind of keep us in, in form, you know what I'm saying, and kind of roll into the playoffs as sharp as we can. Um, but, yeah, who fucking knows? Who knows? YNG's in the chat. Salute to you, my brother. Um, Julian Papa Bear's in the chat. 44 says, damn, y'all started early today. Good morning, gents. Uh, yeah, normal time for us. I don't know what time it is where you at. It's probably like 10 a.m. or some shit, but uh, good morning to you too, my brother. Um, all right, let's move on. So, coming to the games, I actually have action now. Um, Rockets, Jazz. Rockets visiting the Jazz in Utah. Uh, injury news for Houston. Still no Sangoon. Still no Tate. Uh, just the normal guys, you know, no Eason. Uh, for Utah, no Colin Sexton, no Jordan Clarkson, no John Collins, no Walker Kessler, no Chris Dunn, and Lori Markinen is still out with an injury. So, um, I'll kick us off here, Lock. Uh, all right, so first play I like in this game, I played, I don't even think this line is fucking available. Let me, let me check because I put this in extremely early last night. Smith. Is he not even listed? Okay, I don't fucking know, but let me check FanDuel real quick. I apologize for the delay. Um, yeah, so, okay, what's his two plus threes? Wow, minus 270. Okay, holy fuck. All right, so I'll give you guys the analysis. You know what I'm saying? It's obviously a much different situation. I'm not in the business of giving out stale lines and acting like I'm the shit when the line has moved so much. I took Jabari Smith two plus threes. It was minus 115. I gave this out like 3 a.m. It was minus 115. I also played the three plus threes at plus 245. Um, his three, his regular line right now is two and a half plus 140. So, you know, not a great line. If you want to take it, you know, feel free or maybe put the two plus, you know, in a builder if you're looking for legs or whatever. But, I mean, I'll give you guys a quick breakdown. You know, Jabari Smith's been hooping as a late, uh, you know, great history versus this Utah team. Uh, when playing full minutes, uh, back-to-back games with eight-plus attempts from three, uh, Utah's really been struggling defending catch and shoot and above the break threes, which is perfect uh, for a guy like Jabari and his uh, shot profile. Uh, Utah is allowing a, a bunch more catch and shoot as opposed to pull-up threes. Uh, and pull-up threes will favor guys, more guys like um, Jalen Green, Fred Van Vliet, guys like that. Uh, Jabari's been Houston's most consistent shooter as of late, especially on the road. Great hit rate of wins, great hit rate and blowout wins, so in case that's a concern. Uh, and he's playing a ton of minutes. You know, Houston just seems like they want to play their young guys and see what they have. So he's been playing 38, 40 minutes a game. So, you know, I didn't expect that much fucking line movement. I don't I don't know if anybody – I don't think anybody new got ruled out. It's just I guess the line just got steamed to fuck. So, uh, yeah, do what you want with that info. Um, line moved a lot, so it is what it is. Um I have a build a leg in this game as well. We'll get to that a little a, a little bit later. But uh, like anything, uh, Houston. I just Utah. have a. I got Dylan Brooks under three and a half boards at plus a hundred on three six five. Don't take it elsewhere. It's like minus one forty everywhere else. It's really silly if you play that number when you could get a better number, like like double your money versus you got to put a lot more to double your money. So I, uh, I see the vision of what the guy said in the chat earlier, Omar uh, Yurtsevin over there. First of all, the Rockets have such a huge team in the sense of they get quite a few boards around the whole the whole team. Van Vliet, you got Jalen Green, you got Jabari Smith, and who am I forgetting? Thompson. Thompson, yep. All four of them are board grubbers. Dylan Brooks does not crash. He will get the lucky board here and there, but he does not crash himself. On the defensive end, obviously, sorry, on the offensive end, they're not really getting too many old boards with a team that small. As in, Dylan Brooks isn't going up like Josh Hart is in grabbing boards. So I really like the look here. Also, I don't think this game is going to be competitive. I mean, the Jazz's whole team is pretty much in the hospital right now. Chris Dunn, Jordan Clarkson, Colin Sexton, 
John Collins, Kessler. Uh, where's Marketing? Marketing's out. Yeah, Marketing's yep. done for. So, yeah, I don't think uh, Dylan Brooks is going to get four boards here. Yeah, he could get lucky and grab a couple, but like yesterday, I had Shy, uh, Shea under five and a half boards. He grabbed six in 25 minutes, and I lost. But, you know, he he's someone who actually goes for boards and goes up for boards and tries getting old boards and defensive boards. So this look, I think, in my opinion, is pretty good against the team. Maybe Dylan even sits a little late into the game if they're up quite a bit. I think this game could get on hand really fast. I think Jalen Green has a good potential to drop 35 tonight as another look. I think he could pop off tonight against such a poor Utah team. So that's my only look for this game for the most part. Yeah, even guys like Cam Whitmore, you know, off the bench, uh, another another great rebounder, like you said. Um, they had a bunch of guys that can rebound, so I like that. Um, I was looking at Jalen Green as well. Uh, by the time I got to it, his line has steamed. I was looking at points and assists. I was looking at points, just threes. Um, what's his – Three's line right now. Hold on. Let me look. It's probably two and a half. It was two and a half. Oh. Oh, no. Yeah, it still is. It still is. Yeah, great value, too. Minus 125 on BetMGM. It's all the way up to minus 156 on FanDuel. So, I might play that, too, because, yeah, like you said, I've been looking at it all day. I didn't, I was hesitant because I played Jabari already. Um, But, I mean, let's not act like multiple guys can't go off on this team. I was also looking at um, I'm in under points. I was going to fade. Uh, one of the Thompson brothers. Um, obviously, the hit rate is there. Uh, hit rate is there in terms of his. I think it was like eleven and a half. What is it? Uh, oh, it's way more than that. Holy fuck! It's Fourteen and a half. That's a big number, bro. That's a fourteen big and a half. Number. Huh? Yeah, fourteen and a half. That's a big number. So I was looking at that. Um, hit rate is great. A lot of miles to feed in Houston. Uh, slight blowout potential as well. Um, that's a big, that's a big fucking number. I'll look more into that, but that was my biggest lean in the game. Uh, let's move on. Uh, so Warriors, Trailblazers, lengthy injury list for this game as well. Uh, let me get to it. Um, all right. So on the Warrior side, uh, no Draymond, no Clay. GP2 is questionable, uh, so we'll see if he plays. On the Portland side, uh, Delano Banton is questionable. No Grant, no Simons, no Thibel, still no Brogdon, still no Sharp, uh, still no Williams. Those those last couple aren't anything new. Uh, like anything you like him? That's a Curry under four and a half threes. Wow. And usually when his numbers set at four and a half, I like taking the over in like regular season games, but I feel like – like I said before, this game has blowout written all over it. I really think, um, I really think they get very far ahead. The issue is with them getting very far ahead, Curry might have to pop off for that to happen. But I mean, there's so many other spots that you can target on this Warriors team tonight. I really like Wiggins points a ton. I really like um, people like in the likes of Clay Thompson off the. Is he off the bench tonight? Sorry, I didn't see the line. He's out. I'm, He's out. He's out officially. Yeah. Then I am just a liar and a fraud. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean. There's multiple people who can pop off on this team. I don't think Curry's going to be going 100% yakking up shots right now because there's really no point of him doing it. Shooting the three is one of those things, especially against a team that doesn't care like the Trailblazers, is one of those things that's going to get a star player injured, and that's the last thing you want, falling on someone's ankle. You know, You know how it goes with those types of injuries. I feel like it's one of those plays where it's like, yeah, it's Steph Curry, why are you taking these under? But at the same time, you're like, maybe it's for his safety. So I'm messing with that. Maybe it's the worst play in the world. Like I could see it being the most terrible play I've ever made in my life. He might shoot that <laughs> tonight, but I'll take the risk, especially at plus 120 for it. I mean, I'll take it. Yeah, I might have one coming up that, that may be grosser than that. So uh, oh, I'll match it. I'll match it grossness with some grossness. Um, but yeah, like you said, I was looking at that too because I, I was debating putting Curry in, in, in my builder for the day. And Portland's three point defense has actually been pretty good. Like it hasn't been, you know, bottom of the barrel. It's been top 15 in the league. Um, and we saw last game with Curry. I was sweating my ass off. I took Curry points and assists. And I got a great number. I got 29 and a half. It was 32 and a half. Um, 
by tip off and man made his first couple shots, but he wasn't really taking a lot of shots, you know, partly uh, based on how he was being defended too. But like you said, he, he didn't look, you know, obviously, you know, his last three games of the year. I mean, he's still playing for some. I think they got an outside chance of moving up in, in the playing game, but uh, yeah, not, not too mad. Like you said, I think I got one that's, that's a little grosser. So it's, we'll see. That we'll takes see a we, lot. Yeah. We'll see if we can cast some cro- uh, gross as best tonight. Um, all right, last game. Most of my actions in this game, I got some lottos. I got, uh, you know, build that finishes up in this game. I got some straights, everything. Uh, the 10 o'clock TNT game, Pelicans, Kings. Uh, let me go to the injuries. So, on the Pelican side, Najee Marshall, questionable. No Larry Nance Jr. tonight. For the Kings, no Keegan Murray. I'm, I'm sorry. Keegan Murray is questionable. Uh, he went through shoot-around, so... We'll see what happens. I'm hoping he plays. Uh, Jordan Ford, who the fuck is that guy? He's questionable. Uh, still no Malik Monk, still no Kevin Herter. Jerome Ford? Is that guy in the freaking Browns? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, all right, start it off, my brother. What would you like him? Jerome Ford carried me in fantasy, by the way. That's the only Jerome, reason I Jerome know. Ford threes. Uh, what do I have in this game? I have a really disgusting one again. Uh <laughs> I don't even want to give this out, but it's Keon Ellis under one and a half threes. Um, mm. he his minutes have been so shaky these last four games. It is the weirdest thing. Last game he played thirty six. The game before he played nineteen. The game before he played seventeen. The game before he played thirty one. Why? Like I don't get it. This is actually the most competitive game on the slate, in my opinion. Um, I'm gonna have a same game for this. I'll probably post it on Twitter later. I'm just waiting for official lineups before I do anything. In these games, he went 8 for 15 from 3, 2 for 6 from 3, 1 for 1 from 3, and 3 for 4 from 3. I don't think he gets this type of green light tonight, especially in a very competitive game. And if he does this, get this green light tonight, he's not going to do anything with it. The Pelicans are amazing at defending the 3. We've spoken about this on the floor. They're like, uh, sorry, on the show before, on the floor. Am I cooked? Um... The Pelicans do what Boston does. They let the other team shoot threes, but they defend it very well. They have someone like Herb Jones. They have uh, Zion. Ingram is out tonight, if you said, correct? Yep. Yeah. And, yeah, they have a very good defensive core. I think Trey Murphy's starting tonight. I think he's very good defensively when he starts the game. I don't know about you. But I really think they're going to shut him down. I think they're going to shut down everyone on this team. I think the main score in this game is actually going to be Sabonis. Um, they have the weakest kid in the world named Jonas Valanciunas at center. They also have Larry Nance, who's like, all right, I can see him starting the second half. Is he out? So who's their backup tonight? Couldn't fucking tell you. Wow. Okay, well. I don't know ball. You don't know ball. So, yeah, I'm going to stop. Zion Zion might play some five. I can see that. Yeah, they don't really have any... You know, they don't really have any size, despite you know Jonas and um. Yeah, so Zion so might have to play. Probably going to be a Sabonis, Sabonis eat game, but yeah, yeah. Keon Ellis under. I think in a competitive game, he's not going to get the green light that he's been getting. I mean, yeah, he can still get the ten plus points if he doesn't get the the threes. So I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, perfect segue. I'm also taking oh, the Kings yeah. under threes. You were going to say something? I was going to say that's the end of my lotto. If, um, oh, yeah, so yeah, give it out, yep. Yeah, it's just all the unders. It's pretty filthy. I'm not used to doing this, but, you know, <laughs> sometimes you got to. Ten bucks this man's 70. doing the dark side, bro. I know. I've been seeing Finesse actually win, but his are minus 300, not plus money, so it's a little different. <laughs> yo, somebody in the chat was like, uh, somebody in Discord yesterday was like, yo, I got to start tailing Finesse under, like, he, I want to hate with him. And I was like, yeah, like, hating is a passion. Dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he's just put days, under, like, <laughs> I've just been doing it by myself. And being a certified hater is actually one of the most fun things. It's kind of fun, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm just out here praying these guys don't do their job. Praying on their downfall, yeah. So, yeah. This is what I'm um, running. 10 bucks pays 170. I was going to put it for 20. <laughs> but I'm like, nah, it's an under. So, yeah. I'm not going to mess with it. Too heavy. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, that's a perfect segue. I'm also taking a king. I'm also taking an under. I'm also taking his under threes. It's the grossest, by far the grossest bet of the day. Um, 
I'm going to take De'Aaron Fox under three and a half threes. I'm going to sell high. Um, that man has been hooping, hooping, like otherworldly like hooping. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? So three is last four games. Yeah, six plus threes. The game in between, yeah, yeah ended on three. Um, but you look before that, you know, 13 is last 16 games before that. He was under this line. And it's just a sell high spot. Like, yes, I took um, – it was one of the games I took De'Aaron Fox under his points. We put him in the lotto, all of that shit. I had it in my lotto. Um, and he just cooked. Like, he first quarter, I think he hit, like, three or four threes in the first quarter. So, yeah, bravo. I took my cap. He's been making shots. But, first of all, the man is not a volume three-point shooter, despite what the, you know, last couple of game logs say. And, two, it's a tough matchup for the way Pelic- the Pelicans play, right? Locke touched on it. Um, Pelicans allow a ton of catch and shoot, which is more for guys like Keegan Murray, guys like that. But they're really, really good on uh, defending pull-up threes, and they're really, really good defending handoffs. Uh, the handoffs especially, obviously, because we know Sabonis likes to take top of the key, play that two-man game, and it's a lot of handoffs. Pelicans are a top-three team against handoffs in general, um, especially handoffs uh, leading to three-point shots, which is where Fox is getting most of his action right now and off the pull-up. So um, combine that with what Locke was talking about, just the Pelicans' ability to – uh, play good defense on a three. Their length uh, makes, you know, their length affects three-point shots. I like this. It's, it's very disgusting. It's very sneaky. But, you know, I took I took the under three and a half. What odds did I get on it? I got minus 115 at Hard Rock. Uh, that was by far the best line available. I'd play it probably up to, like, minus 125 or something because it is an under. But, uh, yeah, it might be gross. You know, he might, might be sweating our ass off. He might get, you know, three in the third quarter or something like that. But I like it. Good matchup. Sell high spot. Um... And despite what people may think or that like the beam shit, um, last 20 home games, only averaging 1.9 made threes. The last 20 road games, he's averaging 3.3 threes per game. So a a huge decrease in both attempts and made threes at home, despite all the like the beam bullshit. So, yeah, I like it. I like it. I like we going to look like a genius or like a like a fucking asshole. So I'm I'm prepared for both. Um uh, second play I have in this game uh, is a little two leg that I love. Um, Sabonis under 15 and a half rebounds paired with CJ McCollum over three and a half assists. Um, the Sabonis one is is tricky, right? Because there's some games, uh, just like the Fox uh, played in some games where he's absolutely going fucking crazy, right? I think he had a game. Let me let me double check. Yeah, he just had a game coming off 20. Actually, had two in the last five coming off 20 rebounds. Just a different matchup. Uh, this matchup has not proven to be uh, very fruitful in terms of boards. First a bonus, um, he's under this line in, in 10 straight. Um, versus the Pelicans, he's also never had a game versus Jonas uh, where he's exceeded this line, where he's exceeded his regular line of 14 and a half. Obviously, it hasn't exceeded the 15 and a half. And, you know, we mentioned at the top, no, uh, no Larry Nance. I expect um, Jonas to play even more minutes and be matched up more with Sabonis. Uh, I expect a lot of threes to be shot in this game, which uh, more lends towards guard rebounds, forward rebounds, as opposed to center rebounds. Just a really big fucking number. Just a huge fucking number. Um, And CJ, four plus assist. Uh, Hit rate is good. I think the matchup is good. Obviously, Sacramento is not a great defense. The defense actually gets worse at home. Uh, You know, CJ's not lighting it up in terms of potentials, uh, but he's getting enough. You know, he's hovering around that excuse me, around that 9-10 potential assist mark over his last 10 games. Uh, four should be doable, especially, um, you know, I can just see Zion eating in this game. Uh, I can see the two-man game really, really working for CJ and Zion. So, yeah, like that little two-leg. Um, what else do we have? Can I bring up something? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this is from what we were talking about before with uh, <clears throat> the way the Pelicans play defense against the three. The last four games, the opposing team, so this first one doesn't count. I will still say it doesn't count. 15 for 41 from the Warriors from three, which is terrible. Uh, Seven for 34 from the Thunder. 12 for 43 from the Grizzlies. And uh, where is it? Seven for 37 from the Knicks, who have been absolutely shooting lights out from three. So it just goes to show that. The Pelicans do play amazing three uh, defense from the three, at least as of late, but at least in the last 20 games, they've played insane yeah. defense. Yep, I love it. I love it. Is that screenshot you just sent in the chat, your boy, <laughs> reacting to the stream? That's fucking... He's streaming our stream. 
I thought he was uh, lying yeah. when he texted me, so I had to yeah. go check. Um, but yeah, you heard the man. I love that. I love that. Um, last play I have is the builder, so we could throw that up on the screen. Um, three leg builder, Keegan Murray, two plus threes, Scoot Henderson, five plus uh, assists, and Keontae George, two plus threes. Keegan, I mean, the man has been one of the greenest lights on the team. I think he has 10 plus attempts in like four straight games. He's averaging over that his last 10 games. Um, really good matchup as well, in my opinion. Uh, like I said, more the catch and shoot, right, for guys like Keegan rather than the pull-up game. Scoot, I mean, if you don't fucking know, Scoot is absolutely dishing his ass off. Uh, back-to-back games with 23 potential assists. He's averaging 18 potential assists over his last five games. I mean, five, he can do that in the first fucking quarter. And then Keontae George, this was the, the main one um, used to kind of get the juice down. A little tricky, too, but with all the injuries – uh, for the Jazz, I expect them to play at least 25 to 28 minutes in this game. Hopefully, they, they don't get their fucking doors blown off them in their home court. Uh, but, yeah, Keontae, you know, absolute sharp, sharp shooter from three. Still good hit rate despite, you know, somewhat inconsistent minutes. Great matchup. Uh, again, catch and shoot. Rockets love giving up catch and shoot. Rockets love uh, allowing above the break three-point uh, productivity. So, um, yeah, minus 115 on DraftKings. A little builder action. And then we could just throw up the lottos too. Um, you know, first one is the uh, FanDuel TNT 30% boost lotto, um, which is for the Pelicans Kings game. Uh, Keegan four plus threes, Trey four plus threes. Already talked about Sabonis. Uh, already talked about Fox and the Kings money line. Um, I think the Kings are in slightly better form right now than the Pelicans are. They're at home. Um, very very important game for seeding. Um, so yeah, obviously it's a close game. Spread is close, but. I favor Sacramento, how they're playing right now. Um, I don't think New Orleans is going to have enough offense to hang with Sacramento um, at home. So I think it's a nip and tuck game, but I think Sacramento does come out with it. So, yeah, nice little juicer, you know what I'm saying, with the 30% boost, 32 to 1 on your money. Really like that. And then a the second boost, a um, little double-double uh, parlay. Uh, so plus 25.50 on FanDuel. Trace Jackson, double-double. Scoot, double-double. And Jonas, double-double. Won't dive too much into that. 26 to 1 on your money. Uh, so hopefully we hit one of them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully we hit one. Uh, like like we always say, if we hit anything, any lottos, any big money things, we'll give out money on the next stream. So hopefully one of them motherfuckers hit. You know what I'm saying? I um, like this one. Yeah, right? What? The double-double one? Yeah. Yeah, like sneaky, right? I like it. I like it. Um, Scoot wow. just got to do his thing. That's the, Well, Jonas too. Jonas got to get some minutes. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, but. Scoot will play through a blowout anyways. Yep. And again, he could have ten assists in the third quarter. I'm not too worried about that. I'm not. I'm really not too worried about Trace too. Uh, no Draymond. I expect him to play. You know, a ton of minutes. So, uh, yeah, Jonas just gotta not be a bitch. Uh, keep his hands to himself, and um, you know, board up. So, okay. So uh, let's see. What we need a little commercial break right before UFC. I think. Yeah, we do that. Let me get to the chat, and then we'll kick it to Brad. Um, Mob said these games are tough. Do Kings win the game? Yeah, I kind of just talked over that. I, I do think they do. Uh, Mr. Get Up Skinny, Keon Ellis, 10 plus points. Lot kind of uh, talk you through that. Is it Zeller? I didn't see Zeller on a roster. Uh, I might have missed it, but I didn't see Zeller on a roster. Uh, Papa Bear says, how about the Mets? I am not paying attention at all to baseball right now. Mets smoke the Braves. Like 60 <laughs> Zappy games. said, bro, type louder, please. <laughs> fucking murdering that fucking keyboard over there. Um Lock playing cookie clicker. Uh, Mr. Get Up Skinny, TJ, uh, Trace, Amen, Jonas, Double Double. That's interesting. That's interesting. That was close like to I was close. Like I said, I, I don't, yeah, close to what I had. I don't, I'm not a, in love with the Amen Double Double just because of his points. I uh, mentioned uh, wanting to fade his points, but definitely could happen. That, that's probably juicy as fuck. So not too mad at, not too mad at that. Uh, Trace Sean Ward says 0 and 5 versus the division. Is he talking about, I think he's talking about that, um, Uh, talking about the Kings game? I don't oh, even know. He's oh, debated. division, division, yeah, yeah. Um, no, what what game is he talking about? I'm curious now. I don't know. I don't know. I can't find it. Um, are the odds better playing them separate than double double? Yeah, the only thing uh, I played it like that because on Fanduel you can't. Same game parlay, multiple double doubles. So I like two double doubles in the uh, in the Warriors Portland game. So I got to kind of play like that. You can do it on DraftKings, but it's worse odds. What was uh, it? Mr. Get up. What's up? 
It was J Val, Scoot, and Trace. And Trace, yep. Mr. Get Up Skinny, what's up with Porzingis? Thought he was out, now he's in. Yeah, he's in. Everybody's in. I don't know why, but everybody's in. Uh, pin double, pin double double play. It's up. It's up. Oh yeah, there it is. It's up on the screen. Uh, damn, just peep most of my looks y'all talked about. Yeah, join late. Yeah, appreciate you for watching. Yeah, I'm glad we glad we locked in on the same things. Hopefully they cash. Um, but uh, yeah, that kind of does it. So yeah, we'll take a quick uh thirty second break. Kick it to my my man Brad. Uh, stay locked in. We got UFC to talk about. We gotta go and try to get you know twenty thirty minutes of UFC talk. And uh, we'll make a parlay maybe if lock is down. So stay tuned. Got a lot left to talk about. Like the video. Kick it to my man, Brad. Stay locked in. See you in 30 seconds. Hey, guys. Thank you for watching. Guess what? Friends don't let friends watch videos without smashing the like button. So be a friend and smash the like button and ring the bell. It'll notify you when we go live. Also, if you could, press that subscribe button. More subscribers, the more bets we can get out to all of you guys. And drop your favorite bet in the comments. Take care. Boom. You heard the man. Uh, like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, just surpassed 8K uh, subscribers on the channel. So salute to all of y'all that clicked the button already. Uh, I know a lot of people watch these videos probably don't notice they're not subscribed. So hit that subscribe button. Get notified when we put anything out. A uh, ton of content coming up. Uh, I'm going to record something for UFC 300 tonight. Uh, that'll probably be out tonight or tomorrow. So uh, subscribe to the channel. Bunch of free stuff coming up. Uh, but yeah, let's talk some UFC lock. Um, obviously, like I said, like we kind of touched on at the top, historic UFC card, uh, by far the most stacked card that I've ever seen in my lifetime. Uh, probably will be tough to match moving forward. Maybe UFC 400, you know what I'm saying? Maybe maybe you'll top this, but um, most current or former champions ever on a card, uh, most ranked fighters ever on a card, and most, uh, most fighters on a top 15 pound for pound list on one card. So absolutely fucking crazy uh the car starts off with figueredo garbrandt two former champions first time that's ever happened too so yeah i mean I, I can't get over how fucking excited i am i'm gonna have a lot of action in this car a lot of those that i like i'm so fucking excited um yeah so let, let's get into it so obviously a loaded card so we'll do it like this like um anything stand so we'll, we'll talk through the whole main card we'll talk through what the main card fights is there anything on the prelims that kind of stands out, uh, you know, props, money lines that you like, anything on the prelims that, that you like. So something weird that I was, I don't, I haven't made anything official yet just before anyone says anything, but I think Jim Miller is a surprising, like good look. Preach. He, it is a reach. I know. It's no, no, no. More, I said preach. I said oh, not reach. I said oh, preach. I said reach. No, preach to him. Because I, no, not looking at stats or anything. He fought in UFC 100, fought in UFC 200, and he will be fighting in UFC 300. He has fought in every big UFC event ever. This is probably going to be his last um, crazy number event. Might be his last actual number event. He's kind of fallen off. <coughs> who you know who else has fallen off? Bobby Green. He is a certified gatekeeper of the division. I genuinely think Jim Miller can get a W here whether he's going to knock him out or if he's just going to take it to the distance, I don't know. But at plus, I think 160 right now, I think I'm going to take a stab at it. That's one in the, I don't know. What's your opinion on that fight? Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, I took Jim Miller money line for half a unit. I also took uh, for a full unit, Jim Miller finish only. I think this line is absolutely fucking absurd. I think the line is way off. For those of you that don't know, finish only. If there's a finish in the fight, that's the only time that ticket does not void. So if the, if the fight goes to decision, the ticket voids. Um, Jim Miller finish only is plus 100 on DraftKings. I think Jim Miller has almost all of the finish and equity in this fight. Um, like Locke mentioned, uh, you know, Bobby Green has been, first of all, for only four months ago, that man died in the octagon. That man had a fucking exorcism in the octagon. Jalen Turner separated him from his conscience, dribbled his fucking head off the canvas. Um, and that was only four months ago. And that's very concerning to me um uh, bobby green was out that, that man passed out like three times so that's very concerning but not only that um the tony ferguson fight he got rocked in several times the jared gordon fight he got rocked in took a nasty headbutt which kind of had him you know wobbled uh jude dober absolutely put that man out one hit a quitter so we see now i mean you know yes jim miller's 40 years old but bobby green 37 and it seems like durability wise these guys are in two way different places so 
Bobby Green is way more technical on the feet. He's going to be way faster on the feet. And he's going to be winning a lot of this fight, in my opinion. But as the fight goes along, I think Bobby Green's cardio has started to kind of go on that down that downswing um and bobby green is not his movement is not anything special you know his hands are down all the time when he was younger back in the day he can afford to do that right he's uh the movement is quick he's more elusive but now you know all that shit starts to slow down when you get older um i think jim miller is going to be losing a lot of this fight he might lose the first round might lose the second round but as the rounds go on i think he's going to find some shots i really do um so i think he could finish this fight on the feet uh bobby green is very good you know uh, in terms of takedown defense and shit like that but i think I still think Jim Miller can find some top time and do some damage from, from top, maybe get like a, a ground and pound TKO, something like that. I don't think it's out of the question that he can sub Bobby Green. I think it's unlikely, but I think he can sub Bobby Green. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, if, if Bobby Green's winning equity, in my opinion, is by decision. So if it goes to decision, the bet voids. But I think Jim Miller has almost all of the finishing equity in this fight. So, yeah, I put a full unit on the finish only plus 100, and then I put half a unit on Jim Miller money line. Um, at plus 150, I think I got it at. But, yeah, Jim Miller can win the decision, too. Um, I, Like I say, he has the finishing equity, but he can win a close decision as well. So, yeah, right there with you on that fight. Any other prelims you want to talk about? Any other ones that excite you? Um, I mean, not too much. You know, I'm I'm going to be on – I'm on Marina Rodriguez. That's another dog that I like. I got her at plus 115. I won't dive too much into it. I just think, you know, Andrade – I think a lot of people are giving Andrade a lot of credit for what she did to Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie Dern is on the downswing of her career. Her striking is going backwards. She looked absolutely fucking terrible in that fight. So we know what Andrade wants to do. You know, she wants to throw uh, looping hooks, try to connect with the chin. A lot of people are talking about uh, Jessica's wrestling and grappling upside in this spot. Um, yes, her her recent opponents, those aren't opponents that you want to wrestle and grapple. But even before that, she hasn't shown the willingness to wrestle for 15 minutes so you know i think marina even at age 36 is making small you know small improvements in her get-up game her you know her takedown defense is terrible the get-up game has been terrible but i think she's making small improvements i think her being so much longer um and lengthier than jessica will make it harder for her to take her down so i think marina is the way more technical striker way faster way nastier in the clinch um so yeah i think you know, hot take of the prelims. I think she, I think there's a really good possibility she finishes Jessica Andrade uh, to the body. I think she lands some vicious body shots, some vicious knees. Um, but yeah, I like Marina too. Um, anything else standing out to you on, on the prelims? Um, I kind of like um, Yuri. I don't know, really have a good way. I just think it's going to be more cardio based. And I feel like Rakic has lesser cardio than Yuri. I think it's going to go with the full three. I know it's not a five round. I don't think it's a five rounder. No, no. they're all three rounders. Right? Yeah, okay. Yep. Um, I thought they'd make it special, all five rounders, but that would be a long ass night. Yeah, that would be fucking weak. <laughs> they'd have to start at like four. But yeah, um, I really like Yuri. Rakic, I, when was the last time he fought? Two years ago. Yeah, it's been a while. I just think Yuri's been in the game longer. Yeah, he just lost to Pereira. Pereira, sorry. So... I just I feel like he's gonna be on a nice bounce back. I thought Yuri was gonna actually beat Pereira last time, but you know I'm just a dummy. <laughs> I prefer Yuri. I don't know about you. Yeah, no, I like Yuri too. Uh, this is one of the fights that I want to do tape on again. I, I'm on Yuri as of right now. Um, I think a lot of people are giving a lot of credit to Rakic. Uh, oh, you know, devastating leg kicks. Oh, he got power in his hands. Uh, you know, that's not enough in my opinion. He's very low volume. Very hesitant, very hesitant on the feet, and now coming off major major leg surgery. So I don't think he's all of a sudden going to be a fucking, you know, uh, a monster in there, just a beast pushing forward, throwing volume up. He just doesn't fight that way. Yuri is a fucking tornado in there. So he's not the most technical. He's not the, you know, the most clean on the feet, but he's just very weird and very awkward, you know, throwing strikes from all different type of angles, you know, fucking uppercuts from the hips. Uh, just such a dynamic striker. Um, he's like a fucking tornado in there. So I, I favor that, especially at dog odds. I favor that against a guy like Rockage. Um, if this fight goes to decision, which I don't think it will, but this is, if this fight goes to decision, I think Yuri's gonna Yuri's style is more um, judges favor Yuri's kind of style more, right? Those flashy things, damage over control. You know, shit like that. So even if Rocket just kind of eating up his leg with the leg kicks, landing maybe 
you know, clean, clean shots. You know, the cleaner shots. I think Yuri's going to be the the one kind of pushing forward more, more consistently. Um, just throwing wild ass shit. You know, we see it in all of his fights, uh, which is why he kind of had that meteoric rise. Uh, I mean, a guy only has what fucking he only has four fights in the UFC, which is fucking crazy. Four for a belt. You know, four fights into his UFC career. So, um, you know, but all this experience still as well. So. You know, both guys, you know, some injury concerns, you know, before that Pereira fight, Yuri was coming off injury, but looked okay in that fight, you know, kind of just got caught. But yeah, I like Yuri too, especially at dog guys. I got to tape it again before I make anything official, but I'm, I'm with you there as well. Um, anything else you like him? It's a weird one. Um, I think Yusuf wins by decision or Lopez wins by KO. I don't know which one I'm going to pick yet because, you know, I have to narrow it down. I did like Lopez's last fight. I just don't know if he's going to be able to just steamroll Yusuf like he's been steamrolling his other fights. It's going to be a great fight. Like, this is one of my favorite prelim fights, in my opinion. I believe it's the last one. Maybe I'm wrong. Or is it, uh, sorry, is it Yuri the last one? Yuri is the feature prelim. Oh, okay. Um, sorry, I'm just on this. This site's on such a stupid order. That's why that I'm looking at right now. But yeah, I really think Lopez can get the knockout. But at the same time, I think if he doesn't have enough power to take down, uh, to like damage uh, Yusuf during the fight, that it's just going to be Yusuf's fight to take. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like he has the cardio over Lopez. Lopez fights a very flashy style, which takes a lot of energy. And I just feel like I don't know which side. Which side are you on? Yes, this one is tough, bro. Um, I agree. It's a big step up in competition for Diego. Um, I don't think I don't think he's going to run the- <laughs> run through um Yusuf if he does I mean holy shit I mean the the, the kid's already a, a absolute superstar so early in his UFC career I mean to take a fight on 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 extremely short notice against uh Evloev and almost finish him multiple times I mean that's just so impressive to me um you know he's done exactly what he should be doing against a guy like Gavin Tucker uh past Sabatini I mean minute and a half to get rid of past Sabatini incredibly fucking impressive um I think this is just one of those situations where I have to bet Diego Lopez. I, you know, even at Chalk, I think he just deserves my money. I mean, I bet him in the Gavin Tucker fight. I bet him in the past Sabatini fight. He's cashed some, some props for me and shit. So I think he just deserves my money, bro. I really do. Uh, one of the most dynamic fighters and most exciting fighters you will ever see inside of the octagon. Yusuf is a motherfucker. I mean, power in his hands, very well-rounded. Um, and Lopez is extremely hittable. You know, we saw it. Uh, what fight was that? I think it was the Evloev fight. Yeah, it was the Evloev fight. You know, rounds one, round two. We saw how hittable he is. Um, he's not very technical on the feet, but he's another guy that throws you know weird strikes at weird angles and shit like that. So I don't know a lot. You know, it's another fight where I will do some more research on and shit like that. Uh, what you, what you doing? I had a little sniff sniff over there. A little sniff sniff break. Um, it's another fight. I'm, I'm gonna do tape on again, but holy shit! If Lopez comes out and finishes Yusuf in the first round again, holy fuck! Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of how I feel. Um, I guess wrapping it up, first fight of the night, Davis Figueroa. I think he knocks Cody Garbrandt out within two rounds. I think you're on the other side, right? I don't know what I'm on yet because I did say I'm tailing whatever you tail. <laughs> you pick. However, I just think. It's either, like you said, Figueredo's going to win. Um, I think he's going to win later, or it's going to be Garbrandt very early. Really? Yes. I think it's going to be Garbrandt round, round one, or he's out of the fight. Wow. Just like his last fight. Yeah, I mean, you know, Cody's definitely the cleaner guy. I think he's going to be winning minutes, um, but he's so low volume now, so hesitant to throw anything. You know, we haven't seen a Figueredo fight that he hasn't brought war to his opponent. You know what I'm saying? That hasn't, you can't show me a fight where Figueredo is not landing shots, bringing war, putting the pressure on his opponent at some point in the fight. I don't think Cody could walk through that shit. I really don't. I think he's going to be. That's like my angle. It's like if Figueredo is going to go on a yeah, frenzy early, yeah. and attack really quickly, then yeah. guess what? Maybe Garbrandt is going to get like a lucky overhand or a lucky hook. Smoke yeah. him. Do I want to? I think it have to be that. You know, yeah. I rate. I rate Figueredo's durability and toughness. Um, I, I don't think he's an easy out. So it would have to be, you know, maybe like a counter check hook or something like that and just one hit a quitter. Um, yeah. Do I, mean, I want to rely saying, on luck? No. 
I don't want to rely on luck. Yeah. But I mean, but it is plus 240, right? So you got room mm-hmm. to make mistakes when you're back in a plus 240, plus 250. So, I mean, yeah, I just, uh, you know, I played Davidson round one, round two KO is plus 270. Um, I think that's a really good number. Um, you know, people are talking about, oh, Cody's so, Cody could strike so well. And he's so pretty when he strikes. And, you know, he's going to be winning until he's not winning. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I think that's how the fight's going to go. Um, uh, Holly Holm, Kayla Harrison. I like the over in that fight. I haven't played it yet. I'm probably going to over two and a half rounds. I think Kayla dominates for most of that fight. Um, Holm has not seen anybody even close to what Kayla's gonna gonna bring to that octagon. So if she makes weight, I think she dominates in a somewhat boring fight. Uh, all right, let's get to the main card. Uh, we'll try to we'll try to power through these so we can get you guys out of here. Um, we're making good time. No, been live still under an hour. It feels like more than that, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bo Nickel, Cody Brundage, any any fucking thoughts, bro? Um, we it's the simple. It's he's minus three thousand, dude. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. it, there's one thing you could do in this fight, and it's throw ten dollars on not Bo Nickel, and just hope. Like, yeah, you can't you can't put money on Bo Nickel. I mean, if you're laying three thousand to win a hundred bucks, you're kind of a dummy. First of all, if someone adds a Bo Nickel money line to their card and they mark it as one and zero. Oh, on the card you're an idiot <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you can't be putting coins on them yeah um yeah it's it's not a fight that's going to be exciting by any means it's going to be probably around one submission or just a he's just gonna he's just gonna out wrestle him it's gonna be so boring yeah i think andrew andrew said who's talking like that when they mentioned cody i've seen a lot of people fucking oh cody so Cody striking is so pretty and he's going to box Figueredo's face off and it's going to be a three round. Like I've heard so much of that shit this week. It's incredible. I think people just see the plus 240 and they're like, oh, that's an attractive number. But then they just reach at, at random shit to try to justify them taking a the dog. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I don't know how you watch Cody Garbrandt tape. Like, yes, he's in he two fight winning streak, right? Um, Brian Kelleher, who I backed in that fight, did not land, did not land on Cody like at all. Right. The Trevin Jones fight. Trevin Jones threw no fucking punches in that fight. Zero punches. Like I think he had, I think he landed like seven strikes going into the third round. He didn't land anything in that fight. Third round comes, right? The first real strike that Trevin Jones landed on Cody, you saw Cody kind of like, oh shit. Like, you know, he was having fucking flashbacks. So yeah, I just don't think he likes getting hit at all. Um yeah, bone nickel fight, sneaky looking that fight. I like fight ends by KO at plus one twenty five. Uh, Bo Nickel KO is like plus 110 or something like, or, or like, I think Bo Nickel KO is like plus 125 and fight ends by KO is like plus 115. Just take fight ends by KO. Do not take Bo Nickel by KO. It's 10 cent difference. And that kind of covers you in case Cody does the fucking unthinkable and, and bonks Bo Nickel. But I hate Cody Brundage. I think it's well documented how much I fucking hate Cody Brundage. He's quit in the octagon multiple times. He's cost me money by being an absolute fucking pussy. And quitting in the octagon, so fuck him. I'll say that to his face too. I'll, I'll get fucked up, lot. I'll say it to his face and get fucked up. I don't Do mind. Do you like him or no? Fuck that guy. Um, moving on. Uh, Oliveira Sarukian, lot. Crazy fight. What are you thinking? Okay, I have a friend who's Armenian, and I've been riding Sarukian. <laughs> Pause for so long. I am fading the absolute hell out of him. Charles KO round. Wow. Or round three? I don't know. It's a three round fight, my brother. Oh, am I cooked? Sorry. Yeah, I'm just. You are very cooked. Bro, can, you know why I'm cooked? Is because a fight like Charles versus Sarukin should be a five round fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, all these bro, all any, these fights in the main, all these fights in the whole thing should be a five round fight. Maybe not. Any, maybe not. Any broad. one of these fights can headline a card. That's any, what I'm any saying. One That's why I'm fights. so confused. But yeah, round three. He's going to end it near the end. I sent you that lotto today. I don't know if you saw it. In that I in that group not. chat with oh Eli I did and Richie. I did yeah yeah um yeah it's just some knockouts but yeah I really think like Charles is gonna fight this very calculated he has a very big height difference which isn't the biggest thing in the world in MMA but it does help sometimes see look look at the, look at the chat the Bronx man I'm just saying yeah, but that's man. what that's what scares me that's what scares me right there what um Du Bronx is is extremely he's an extremely public dog. No offense to anybody in the chat. I'm not calling y'all squares, right? I'm not calling anybody in the chat squares. It seems like for this fight, the public is on 
Charles Oliveira, because everybody who doesn't love Charles Oliveira, um, and you know, they look at the highlight reel and all that shit. They're like, oh my god, Charles Oliveira plus one eighty. I have to, but it seems like the sharps are on Sarukian. You know what I'm saying? And I think the line. This is another fight where I just feel like one. You know, Frankie just said it in the chat. I do feel like the line is a little bit disrespectful. I, I think. I think Charles should be maybe plus one twenty, plus one twenty five around there. He's accomplished so much more than Sarukian has. It is a step up in competition for Sarukian. Um, you know, Oliveira has a five round experience that Sarukian does not. Championship experience that Sarukian does not. I think those things of extremely valuable experience in the octagon, championship experience, I think is extremely important um, and extremely valuable. I think this is another situation where Oliveira just deserves my money. You know what I'm saying? I, I think it's, I think it's just that simple, right? How wrong can you be back in a plus one eighty? You know what I'm saying? You, you know. Sarukian can knock him out in the first round. Um, a lot of the people on Sarukian think that Sarukian is going to have all the success on the feet. Sarukian is going to take him down and beat the fuck out of him once he takes him down. I don't agree. I don't think it's that simple. I think this fight is a lot more complicated than that. I think it's one of the more high, one of the most high level fights on this card. Sarukian is going to be in danger for as long as this fight lasts. If Sarukian does take Oliveira down and he is beating the fuck out of him in his guard. He's still in danger. Don't get it fucked up. I mean, we've seen Oliveira Triangle, rock like a motherfucker. Crazy, you know? like, yeah. We've seen people be in Oliveira's guard and be beating the fuck out of him. And Oliveira finish guys from that position. You know, Oliveira is just one of the nastiest, most tricky, most fucking dynamic ground players in the fucking, in the, in the world. You know what I'm saying? So ain't no way you telling me that Oliveira has no chance in this fight. I've heard that this week. Oliveira has zero chance. To win this fight, I've heard that a lot. People have told me that in my face yeah, that dumb. Oliveira has zero chance to win this fight. I think that's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Sarukian's chin has been tested in the UFC already. We see him fucking do the chicken dance already against guys, uh, you know, guys that are lesser than Oliveira is. So Oliveira's gonna throw dynamic strikes on the feet, everything you could imagine knees, teeth kicks, head kicks, you know, uh, hooks, straight punches, one twos. Sarukin is going to be in danger every fucking second that this fight goes on. So at plus 180, right, how wrong can you fucking be? I really, I think the smart thing, I really do think the smart thing is to play Sarukin in a spot. But sometimes you just make an emotional decision. Sometimes, you know, you look at the plus money and it just grabs you by the balls. You know what I'm saying? It's Charles fucking Oliveira. I think he deserves the money, um, especially at the, these long odds. That's just kind of how I feel. So. I hope he gets it done. I think the place is going to go fucking insane if Charles finishes Armand. It's a big step up for Armand, bro. Armand, you know, Armand hasn't had that 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 hot spotlight on him really at all in his career. So now, now here you go. UFC 300 main card against a fucking living legend former champion. We'll see. We'll see. You know, if Sarukian just dominates and finishes Oliveira in the second round, third round, I'll tip my cap. You know what I'm saying? Extremely impressive. So... That's kind of how I feel, you know what I'm saying? I think we should do a recap before the NBA game starts for the people who came just a little late. What time do you start? 7:30? 7:10. That's why. There's one game at 7:10. We didn't have anything in that in that uh in that game though, right? I can give it out. Vucevic under 12 and a half rebounds. Okay. And uh, yeah, That's yeah, it. I remember that. That was the only thing. All right. So yeah, there you go. And we we will still do a recap. We're almost done with the UFC shit. Um so we'll do a recap afterwards. You, you guys can stay tuned for that. Um, Holloway Gaethje, brother. Holloway Gaethje, BMF title. This one is five rounds. What you like? Uh, it's I'm still debating uh, Gaethje round one or two versus Holloway three, four, or five. Um, I do like the Holloway knockout angle. I you spoke to me about it earlier this week about the Holloway cardio advantage. Yeah, Gaethje. Yeah, like, that's why I said Gaethje one two or Holloway three, four, five. I mean. I also am going to be targeting, if FanDuel releases the lines for the significant strikes ladder, I will be taking Max Holloway significant strikes maxed all the way to the top. I don't care what the number is. It could be 240. We've seen this guy have 400 strikes in a fight. So, I mean, he is the significant strike leader in the UFC. His record will never be broken. I will live and die by that. I don't think it's even possible for it to be broken. And, yeah, uh, that's one fight I don't think... Um, all, uh, Gaethje is going to get knocked out very easily. That's why I do like the significant strikes. Max is a great boxer, and I know how Justin Gaethje fights. He will try his best 
to keep this on the feet the whole time. He's not gonna. He's not. It's the BMF belt. It's the baddest mother fuck. And I know for a fact they're not gonna go to ground and pound by any means. They're gonna be standing up. They're gonna be giving each other hell for five rounds straight. So I will be going with Max Holloway in this fight. You changed my mind. Gage won me a lot of money this summer. I'm gonna fade him tonight or on Saturday night. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing I was talking to you talking to you about, right? Whenever a guy makes you money consistently or makes you a shit ton of money, there's that emotional connection. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm on. I'm on blessed too. I mean, y'all motherfuckers must have forgot. I mean, I'm hearing the most absurd fucking things this week. Um, just completely degrading Max Holloway. Um, oh, you know, Justin's power is gonna be too much for Max. Uh, Justin's gonna knock this guy the fuck out. Max has never even been dropped in the UFC, let alone knocked out. Haven't even been dropped. Has not touched. Don't know what the canvas feel like. So I, I can't, you know, put too much emphasis on something that I've never seen before. We've never seen it happen, <laughs> you know. So, you know, I, I think, I think Justin's finishing equity is minimal in this spot. I think Max's finishing equity is more than Justin's. I think just, I think uh, Max will have the uh, volume edge. I think he has the cardio edge. Uh, we've seen Max countless times in five round fights. We've seen Justin be scheduled for five rounds a bunch, but not go that long. So I think he has the cardio edge. I think he has the volume edge. I think he has the durability edge. Uh, almost every fight we see Justin doing a fucking chicken dance. Like I said, Max has never been uh, so so much as dropped. A lot of people are pointing to that Poirier fight, right? The last time Max came up in weight to fight Poirier. Th- this is this is what I this is what I love about the internet, right? People, are, oh. Poirier was boxing his face off. Max couldn't deal with the power, right? First of all, that fight was four years ago. That's first of all. Second of all, that fight was on short notice, right? And third of all, there's value in experiencing that already, right? This is Max's second time at 55. If you look at his physique, it looks like he's putting on the weight more proper, right? He's had more time to prepare for being at 155. So that that's so many edges right there, right? And that's only about half my breakdown, right? I don't want to bore y'all motherfuckers, but... Yeah, uh, yeah, I must have fucking forgot. Also, the UFC gave him floral shorts, right? He basked for floral shorts for years. That man ain't losing in floral shorts. Come on now, bro. Get get the fuck out of here. So, I, I played Max Holloway. I think I got him at like plus one forty, plus one fifty around that same around that price. I also took Max round two, three, four KO at plus sixteen hundred. I think that line is very very wide. Um, I think uh, I think Max can kind of hit him with a you know standing TKO round three, round four. You know, so that's how I feel. Uh, Max, bless Express. Yeah, yeah, I must have forgot. Brand new BMF champion. And shout out to Gaethje. Gaethje's a motherfucker. You know, a lot of people are talking about the leg kicks as well. Uh, Gaethje is going to land a bunch of leg kicks, but um, I think Max can kind of time some shit off of those leg kicks too, land some combos off of those leg kicks. So, yeah, it'll be a tough fight. I'm not trying to say Max is going to fucking run through him. It'll be a tough fight. It'll be a close fight. It, it's a fucking banger of a fight. Uh, but yeah, give me Max at this plus money. A uh, bit disrespectful, in my opinion. Um, like, do you want to talk about this co-main? Uh, Wei Li, Yan? Um, no, I don't have to. I just like I like Wei Li by uh by knockout. Actually, I think it's gonna be a ground hell finish. Yeah, that's just my angle on it. One thing I forgot to say in a, in a Max fight: don't be surprised if Max shoots some takedowns, brother. Don't be surprised. If Max finds himself on top, I, I said it. I, it's a hot take, but I said it. anyways. I agree. You know, Whaley's minus five twenty, minus five thirty right now. Um, yeah, it, it, the 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 longer it stays on the feet, the closer the fight is gonna be. But Whaley ain't dumb. You know, we've seen more and more throughout her last couple of fights her willingness to offensively grapple. Um, yeah, I think she dominates on the ground. Um, yeah, when does Whaley want to finish? It is the question, right? We've seen Whaley dominate. Amanda Lamos for all five fucking rounds and not be able to get her out of there. So we'll see if she's able to do so. But yeah, I think Whaley dominates. Uh, main event of the evening, my brother. Uh, light heavyweight championship of the world. Poatan Pereira, Pereira going against Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill. Uh, Locke, I don't want to get too deep in this fight. I'm going to record with James right after this and it's going to be for the main event. So I don't want to get too deep. But uh, I think I know who you are. You call them Sweet Dreams because you're going to bed, right? <laughs> That's good. Tell, tell the people, tell the people, tell the people what you think, bro. Oh man, so I don't know. I can't. I can't pick a winner right now. I think it's either gonna be uh, Pereira later into the fight or Jamal. Or is it Jamal? What 
Is his name Jamal? Yes, motherfucker. Because I come on, you see the level of disrespect is fucking crazy. No, 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 no. No. Because his name is spelled Jamal, and I call him Jamal all the time (laughs) as a joke. I just wanted to ask you. But yeah, Yeah, I think he should win in the early rounds. I just don't know if I can trust that heel, dude. (sighs) We know how Pereira works, man. Just leg kick after leg kick. It's undefendable. You know what I'm saying? Is it? (laughs) <laughs> Who's defending it? They, well, was Izzy able to defend it? What happened in that? What happened in Izzy fight though? Bro, he's still three and one against him. Yeah, but you can't throw leg kicks when you're unconscious. You know what I'm saying? I understand that, but is he going to be unconscious? He said the leg kicks are undefendable. They are. <laughs> wow. He Who's said, defending? He said the leg kicks at Jordan in in 94, 94, 95. That's what he said. Hey, he, the leg kicks are not Tatum. That's for sure. Wow, that was uncalled for, brother. Holy <laughs> shit. Look, look, Frankie said it, right? Sweet dreams are made of these. I, I, I'm on your side. I told you. To whatever, whatever you're taking is what I'm taking. In, <laughs> in the text message today, what I sent you included Jamal Hill by knockout. Oh, did it? I oh, yeah, it was Jamal like plus 200, by, right? It was like plus 200. Plus 800. No, there's no way. Am I cooked? You're cooked. Wait, no, I swear. You're definitely cooked, buddy. Oh, well, yeah, I'm so cooked. It was plus 180. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm on the Jamal Hill side, uh, and new and still man never lost his belt. Um, so yeah, I think he gets his belt back. Um, like I said, I'll talk about it more in the, in the video that I'm going to record for you guys, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, I don't think Pereira is like the public side. I, I do see a lot of love for Pereira, but I do see a lot of love for Jamal too. I think it's one of those fights, right? The main event on the most historic card ever is going to be a lot of two way action. I feel like, but. Yeah, especially at dog odds, bro. Like, come on. Jamal's a fucking dog. I think he's going to be more durable. I think he's going to be uh, more powerful, right? And that, that may be a hot take. I think he's going to be faster. I think a lot of what Pereira does is flow and rhythm, right? That doesn't necessarily mean he's the fastest guy in the world. He just, right, he's been doing it for so long, right? That rhythm in the octagon, that fucking, uh, just just the, yeah, the rhythm and the dynamic I don't know if that's a word, dynamic The dyna, the dyna, whatever the fuck. He's very dynamic on her feet. Um, and, yeah, you got to worry about that left hook. You got to worry about the fucking leg kicks, all of that type of shit. But, I mean, you know, that's what everybody's saying, right? The leg kicks. Alex, a lot of times, just throws the naked calf kick. You know what I'm saying? Jamal's going to be ready for that shit. You know, Jamal's going to have counters off of the leg kicks. Jamal's going to throw some vicious one-twos down a pipe off of those naked leg kicks. So, you know, the leg kicks are a problem, but one thing Jamal does very well, too, is switch stances, right? It's a lot it's a lot more difficult to get consistent timing, even on, on stuff like leg kicks, if the guy's consistently switching stances. So, yeah, I think Jamal, I told you this before, I think Jamal knocks his ass out within 12 and a half minutes. So, I'm going to bet that, too. I'm going to bet, probably bet his round one, two, three KO. Um, I'm already, uh, you know, I, I have two units on Jamal already. Might add to it, to be honest with you. Um one of my, my better bets on the card. One of my best bets of the card. Sweet dreams, baby. Sweet dreams. Um, yeah, we're going to see Pereira fucking unconscious staring up at the fucking lights. And something that nobody's like, something that people are like conveniently omitting. Alex Pereira is 36 years, years old. You know what I'm saying? So we've seen him knocked out and hurt several times already in his short career. And he's 36 years old. Right? That's what I'm saying. The durability edge is on Jamal's side, too. Listen, I said I wasn't going to get that deep into it. I did anyways. But, yeah, two-unit play, Jamal. I love it. I think he fucking sleeps his ass. Um, I really do. But, yeah, yeah, I'm, gl- I'm glad we got to do that, bro. It's rare we talk UFC extended like that. So, um, definitely uh, a card deserving of that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, let- let's get to a little recap, Lock. Um, did that baseball game start already or no? It did, yeah. Okay, all right. So hopefully y'all yeah, were tuned in for that. Um, NBA lock. What do you have? Just that uh, that under slip. We could pop pop it on the screen. Uh, the screen. I mean, it already started with that uh, Bulls Pistons game. But yeah, just the unders. The absolute hater parlay. I love. <laughs> I've been love making these the last few days. I mean, it, it's there's probably already a reason it's cooked. Actually, no, Vucevic only has one rebound. Okay, so we're good. <laughs> I, I thought, like, I'd go look at the box score first quarter. He has, like, six. Seven. Yeah. yeah. 
But yeah, um, it's just unders the big hater slip. Finesse could pop up his place and then big hater energy, bro. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, what do we got? Yeah, all right. So first play, uh, Sabonis under fifteen and a half paired with uh, McCollum four plus assists minus one fifteen on DraftKings. Uh, what do you got next? Uh, three leg builder Keegan Murray two plus threes, Scoot five plus assists, Keontae George two plus threes. Um, let me get to the straights first, James, if you don't mind. Um, a couple more straights. I took. I'm not even going to mention Jabari. Let's just skip over that shit. Um, I did take De'Aaron Fox under three and a half threes minus one fifteen. Um, yeah, that's the last straight. And then what's up on the screen? That's the TNT thirty percent boost on FanDuel. That's the first lotto of the day. And then we got another lotto, double double lotto. Trace, Scoot, Yoval, or double doubles. Hopefully, we hit at least one of them motherfuckers. Um, and that'll do it, guys. That'll do it. Loaded stream for those of you that stayed all the way through. Big salute to y'all. I hope y'all got a, a ton of value, not only for tonight, but for Saturday as well. Like I said, I'll be recording a video uh, for the main event uh, that'll be out later tonight or tomorrow. Um, and yeah, we'll be right back uh, with you guys on Tuesday. Um, probably just MLB, probably just MLB, NBA. Like I said, uh, you know, regular season ends on Sunday. I'm done with NBA after this probably. So yeah, it'll be a shift of the stream. But like I said, we're going to be here still rocking with you guys two days a week. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoyed the stream. Like the video on your way out. If you don't mind, like anything else to close on. Let's have a night as per usual. Yes, sir. The man said, let's have a night. Let's cast some tickets. Good luck on all your action. I hope you guys make a shit ton of money tonight. We'll see you on Tuesday. Peace. Later. So be a friend and smash the like button and ring the bell. It'll notify you when we go live. Also, if you could, press that subscribe button. More subscribers, the more bets we can get out to all of you guys. And drop your favorite bet in the